Yeah. Can you hear me? Okay. I just got. Yeah, I hear you. I just got like a little uh, something from the um, from whatever Zoom? Zoom thing. Yeah. Cool. Well, anyway, um, basically, that that's how I deal with it. So, I mean, because Trump is the president at the time, um, whether you know, I don't know. I guess I just kind of like say, "What's well, it now?" I don't have like a conventional. Well, what I from engaging other people, I don't have like a conventional view of um, some ideas about God choosing or not choosing. It's just I don't re- I don't argue with reality. I don't know if that makes sense. It's like he's the president, so that's the deal. Now, do I have to agree with everything he says because he's the president? No. Or do I have to um, like just blindly follow whatever he says? No. Um, because I think I have volition, which God also created. And so in my volition, I can say, yeah, okay, he's the president right now. I'm going to pray for him. I'm going to pray for, you know, everybody. And I really like, I don't know if I'm being goofy or not, but I really do try to pray for everybody. Um, the people I know, the people I don't know, the people who hold some of my same ideological value and the people who hold what may seem to be different values. I think we're all in here just bumbling around, struggling, and don't really know half the stuff we think we know. Um, so we all need prayer. So that's that's kind of how I roll. I, don't, I mean, yeah. Now, if you ask me if I were God, would I, would I chose him? If I, I would be like, no. Nah. <laughs> you know what I mean? But I'm not. <laughs> so. Yeah. No, I feel you. And I no, I don't think that's goofy at all cuz I mean, and I and I know you and I I guess I should back up since uh, you know, this is this is going on uh YouTube and uh you know, I know you as Pedro, my friend. I also know you as the the co-pastor of a church. Uh but yeah. can you just uh introduce just just tell tell uh, us a little bit about who you are, just you know, just take a half a minute to a minute, you know. Yeah, um I mean, yeah, my name is Pedro. I always say that's the rumor anyway. Because <laughs> my, you know, that's another philosophical thing you'll get, I might get into. But I go by Pedro Silva, and uh, yeah, I'm, I'm an associate pastor of the church out here in Boulder. And um, I father the two daughters um, that help shape my worldview, husband to a wife who also helped shape my worldview, and like a person that I, you know, trying to follow what I understand to be um, the teachings of Christ. Um, not necessarily, you know, I practice a religion and I like serve in a religious institution. I don't think my relationship with, with Christ is necessarily in a conventional religious context. I kind of um, participate in it the same. I would like, uh, like me and you are friends. And over time, I like learn more about you. You learn more about me. And I might like, you know, add things to my life because of our relationship. And I might take things away from my life because of our relationship. So it's the same way with me with, with um, my relationship with Christ and, um, and God. So, yeah, that's pretty much it. I rap too and do poetry and stuff like that. All right, cool. So, so having said that, it's like, uh, I, I guess what part of what you're saying is Trump you know, that, that postcard or whatever, it, that is what it is. But somehow, if if there's a God that is in control of everything, then that God allowed Trump to be president. So, like, what you know, what you're saying is, it, you know, it is what it is. Somehow, I mean, I guess that's part of my take of what you're saying is God allowed it, right? Yeah, I mean... I guess that's like, a, it's kind of like a simplistic view from my perspective though, because like, let's see, how can I articulate this? Okay, so some of us have a view of God being like, uh, I'm God, um, I'm a, I'm in charge, because uh, that's what I said. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm the boss or something like that. And I don't really have that, that's not my relationship with God anymore. It used to be my relationship with God, um, but 
now I don't have that relationship with God. I had a relationship where my personal relationship with God is one of like, like a, I mean, it's complicated, man. Cause it's like so multidimensional. It's not, you know, it's like, I, I can look at God as a, when I was a kid, I used to always look at God as a father because I didn't grow up with my dad. So I needed God to be father all the time. So that was like my, my concept. And that's also what I kind of got taught in church. But then we used to also sing songs that say, you've been my father, you've been my mother, you've been my sister, my brother too, and all this stuff like that in church. But we only, um, we talked about how God brought us from a mighty long way, but we only related to God as father. And to me, I think that like, when you contextualize or limit a relationship to a certain um, like context, you, it's not saying that it does it, that that's not true, but it also limits it because, like, like my um, let's say for example, my kids, like for the early part of, I'm their dad, and um, I might have to put some ear my earphones my earphones might die in a second, <laughs> but I'm their okay. dad, so I might relate, I might relate to them just like, hey, I'm your dad, and I might sometimes even say, hey, don't put a you know your finger inside a, a light socket, you know, and I might not even stop explaining to them why. I might be like, because I'm a dad and I said so, you know, because I really don't want them to get hurt. So that's like the way I might relate to them. But then as they start to develop language and understanding and stuff like that, then I might say, hey, buddy, you know, this is why I didn't want you to stick your hand and, that, you know, stick a, a pin inside a light socket because you could get shocked. And, but I might say it a little bit different. Then they go, okay, dad, I understand. And then they start making some different choices. Our relationship develops and, and they have like different capacities. Then they might start learning some more stuff. And then we just kind of go back and forth and we grow up in that relationship. And it's like now all of a sudden we like get to a point where we start making some decisions together, you know? And it's not like just like, I'm just like, I'm the dad or I'm in charge. I know better. It's like, well, what do you think? You know? Oh, well, hey, let's like, and then we start, you know, developing and creating um, experiences together. And that's how it is. And I feel like the same way with God. Like, I feel like God, you know, if God needs to be like, yo, this is how it is, then God will be that way. But if we come to a level of consciousness where we're actually thinking and paying attention and want to be active participants in creation, then God's like, yo, what do you think? You know, because I, I created wow. you. Like yeah. in my image, I want to know what you think. Let's, let's, let's talk about this. You know what I mean? Yeah. And that's that's how I choose the experience. Some people might be like, whatever, man. But no, that may be that's where they need to be. Yeah, I think that's beautiful, man. That that reminds me of my relationship with my daughters. Because, uh, you know, yeah, when you're when they're kids, it's you just got to keep them safe, keep them from running out in the street. Right. And, right, and it's, exactly. it, we don't ha we don't have time for asking why sometimes. But now. You know, I think about my relationship with God. It's a relationship. It's, you know, right. it's, and some people understand that. Some people don't. Right. But my, my relationship with my daughters now, it's a relationship. It's not about my, it's not, you know, they're 16 and 17 now and they're having to deal with choices and decisions. Think about it, man. I mean, when, when I was 16, we didn't even have internet. You know, yeah, exactly. I told my daughter that yesterday. So they got to deal with stuff, you know, that I didn't, I didn't even have to, have to worry about until I was much older. So I can't, right. I can't put, I can't put my, you know, impose my will on them. And I got to a realization that, okay, it used to be more important that you do what I say and, and what I, and, and that, and that you need to, you need to follow my instruction and stuff like that. And then it got to a point where that is not important. What is more important is to have the relationship. I, it's more yeah. important for me for me to have the relationship with you than for you to see things my way or do things my way. You know. Right. Yeah. yeah. And that's the way about even like the, the the nation that we have. You know, we are, it's a bunch of us that we all are part of this together. You know what I mean? And it's like that's why I'm all about trying to love everybody because like God chose God. Somebody might say, "Well, God chose Trump," and I'll say, "Yeah, God might have chosen Trump to some degree." But God also chose all of us, you know, not just 
like one person that we supposed to just be like, whatever they say or whatever the case may be. And especially in this nation where we saying that we like have a democracy or something like that, then it's incumbent upon us, each and every one of us to like live into that calling, you know, cause God chose the time that we we're born in, chose the government system that we're in and stuff like that. Like back in the day when they wrote some of those things, there wasn't any kind of democracy or anything like that. That was just like, yo, here's the king, um, blah, 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 or the person that's in charge, listen to that person. They had a different, a little bit of different of a worldview. Now we chose, a, we chose, or God chose, however you want to look at it. God chose a democratic in this particular nation. If we're saying like going with the authorities that God created, it's not one dude or one person is God created. Then we chose all of the leaders, all the elected leaders, all we chose the, the uh, God chose for each one of us to have a vote, a voice when we vote or whatever, if you want to use that ideology. So, I mean, I don't have anything against people who think that way. And I know some people love being controlled because they're like, they don't trust themselves with freedom because they feel like if they were free, they just do something crazy. But I come from the space and I'm not saying that's wrong because you got to know yourself, but I'm coming from the place that like love fulfills like all things, you know what I mean? So like, if I'm like loving people and the scriptures say this too, then I don't need a law telling me like, don't murder somebody. Don't do this, do that and everything. I need that. If it's like, I'm, I'm planning on doing some stuff like that and I need a law to uh, give me a consequence. So I'm like, Hmm, I sure feel like, chopping off uh, Greg's head and using it as a, a soccer ball. But I don't want to go to jail, so I guess I won't do it. You right. know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, so I then it's like, But then we do have I, those, we have some cases where motherfuckers want to cut people up and eat them and keep them in the deep freezer. So yeah, for them, and they're going to do that real whether there's a law or not. <laughs> true, true. Yeah, that means if they if that's what they want to do, they're gonna do that. Whether the, they're not sitting there saying, "Hmm, the law tells me I shouldn't," you know, we sound kind of gross right now. But well, at any rate. I, well, you know, I said it, I asked you asked you if there's anything that's off limits. No, but think yeah. about it though. The the ones that do it, they know that there's the law because they are careful to hide their their tracks. Oh, yeah. So right. I mean, anyway, <laughs> you, you they know it's there, but it's not stopping well, them. They're trying to say, oh, how do I get around it? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. Like they're like, well, how do I get around this law so I can do what I want to do? And that's like humans in general. It's like, for me, it's like this. My, um, I feel like whatever other people do, that's between them and God. And what I do is between me and, and God. And, and the one that got eight. And the one that got eight, but you know, I mean, <laughs> but this, I mean, is, this, on, is a, this, this is the thing, right? Like I decided that I was going to roll with Jesus, right? And like, I used to be, I was talking to my friend about this, like most of the day yesterday. Like, I, um, I used to be like, oh, I want to be a good Christian. I'm not going to sin. I don't want to cuss. Like, I'm going to say like, you know, just like whatever, you know? And it's like my whole goal in life was to, um, die in a way that I wouldn't embarrass my grandma at my, at my funeral. <laughs> like that was my goal. Like I didn't even like expect to live past 18, you know, same here. So the same here. Yeah. And I was, I was like, man, I don't want my grandma to have to lie at my funeral. That was like a whack, uh, like goal, but yeah, that was my goal, man. And then once I lived past, when I got like close to 18, I was like, man, and we're from the same, you know, general area in Virginia. And once I was like, dang, I'm 18 and I'm still alive. Let me get out of here before they can find me. <laughs> yeah. I got I to gotta so figure I'm, some stuff out. <laughs> yeah. So I left and went in the military, everything. But I still had this thing in my mind like, okay, you know, I'm probably not going to make it. But I just still want to just have a good funeral. And when I was going through trials and tribulations, like I volunteered to go to Saudi Arabia. I'm kind of speeding this up. But I volunteered to go to Saudi and I was up in there, had my last words in my head that I was going to go over there and then somebody was going to kill me. <laughs> and I was going to be like, I love God and I love my wife. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Because like, because I was trying to like, 
I was, I thought I was following God, but I was like really following like people in the church and it's not the same thing. And then, and like, I realized that. And then I went like, got all like kind of hurt and stuff like that. I'm like, oh, again, I'm speeding this up. I got hurt. Then I said, I'm rejecting God. But then I, I had to reject God in my experience or to think I was rejecting God in order to actually encounter God. Cause what I was rejecting was like the church and religion mm -hmm. um, and not in general, but just in the particular circumstances. And then I like encounter God in my experience, you know, in a place, in a random place, you know, in the desert, in a random hotel. I don't even remember where I was. And then, in the in uh, Saudi Arabia or in, in the no States? no no I didn't even go to Saudi Arabia this is like in some somewhere between Michigan and Arizona I don't even know I just like I was, I was it was a it's a longer I wrote some blog posts about it you had to go back and look them up right. uh, it's called Road Trip with God DMX and twenty something bottles of water but anyway <laughs> um so I was going through all that stuff and then when I came out of it I was like my mind was like okay. I was mad at God. Let's just say, I thought I was mad at God, like, like Lieutenant Dan and, and Forrest Gump. And I was like, but so my soul kept telling me to pray, pray, pray. But I didn't really want to, cause I was like, just hurt because of what I thought was a unfair. Uh oh, I lost your audio. <clears throat> Can you hear me? I'm having some technical difficulties. Greg, can you hear me? Yep, I can hear you now. I don't know what's up with this thing. It was tripping. It just dropped the call out of nowhere. All right. It dropped the call out of nowhere, and then it just, um, I don't know. That was the devil, man. <laughs> I, was I, know <laughs> but, uh, people, I know some people who automatically go there every time that happens. Yeah, yeah. But um, yeah. anyway, long story long. I ended up, I ended up just making this the understanding, coming to this place and saying, I'm a believe in God, absolutely or not at all. You know what I mean? And I was just like, that's just how I decided to start rolling. And I was like, everything that is like antithetical to the idea of God being loved, I'm going to drop it, even if it takes me my entire life. And that, and I'm just going to go where that takes me. And I didn't know where it was going to take me, but I just like made that commitment. So basically that's, that's where I am now. I don't know how I got to that statement, all that stuff I was just saying, but that kind of turns it into a math problem. 